What's going on YouTube? Back in the shop once again doing maintenance. So I only got one thing left to do and that's the hydro change on the 2200. Y'all stay tuned, we're gonna get at it. is some of the stuff you're gonna need or the stuff I'm gonna use to do the oil change. We got some 20W50 oil, uh, two five quart jugs, one for each reservoir. You're gonna use all of that. You have the two filters here with the new O-rings. Here's the uh, part number if you need it. And you're gonna need like a little hook tool or a pick in order to grab the filter right here, once you take the cap off to give it a little tug, you'll need a 6.1 and 1 8 socket. You could probably get away with the 12 point, but you gotta be real careful, don't use the impact uh, with this because you can strip it out like I did last time. That's why I had to order these new caps. Apparently on the 2200, which is what we're working on today, it has plastic caps and it gets stripped very easily if you're not careful. I wouldn't use an impact and I would use a six point socket if possible. Because on this one, you could use an impact because it's uh, aluminum. And I've, I've always used just a 12 point. This one right here with the impact, never had issues with that. But I definitely stripped this one out last time. So I had to order some new ones. And in case that happened to you, or you want to just be safe, and you want to order some of these. Here they are. I forgot how much they are. Ordering them from uh, Jack Small Engines. All right, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is jack it up, put it on jack stands, get it a little bit more clearance under there. I'm also going to remove the wheels. And I got it jacked up in the front and I put it underneath the mower deck on each side and I have the jack just sitting there for backup. Make sure it's stable and it won't fall on you, but you want it level and elevate a little bit that we have some working room. So keep in mind the caps that are on here are stripped right now because the last time I attempted it, I stripped it. So I'm hoping I can get it back off so I can put the new caps on. Alright, so as you can see this is the new one and the problem is this is all stripped out on that one there from the last time. Hence why I had to order these. I thought I could take them off. Uh, I can't. It's just all breaking up every time I try to grab anything right here. So what I'm going to do is drill a hole in the old one right here and right here. Uh, that way the oil can drain out and maybe I could possibly use this rod and make a tool 
to where I can put in those two holes and twist it around and get the old one out. All right, I'm gonna see if I can do this. I got the camera on where I'm gonna drill a hole. It's probably gonna make a mess, but I gotta get the oil out and I need to drill these holes to get these caps off. So I gotta do what I gotta do. Get them started first. Before I make a mess. Now that we got some holes, hopefully I got some kind of leverage where I can break it loose or something. I'm also going to go ahead and remove these caps. You want to make sure everything is clean, blow off everything before you do anything because you don't want to get the uh, inside of these pumps contaminated. So I'm going to take these off that way it can flow a little bit better. Alright y'all, I think I'm getting somewhere. So I have a, a vice grip on my piece of half inch rod and I got the two forks stuck in here and I think I have it going through the filter as well like I, I stabbed it in as far as it'll go. It's going in about an inch or so and I got the vice grip really really tight on it so I'm getting some movement as you can see. So I'm going to have to keep biting away at it with the vice grips and keep turning it until I get it all out. I can't believe Ferris, or it's not really Ferris, it's Hydro Gear would put a plastic cap on that. That's ridiculous. And I'm pretty sure that's the same cap that's on the Z3X on their wheel motors. Ah, man, my hands are going to hurt tonight. I'm getting it though. I love when a plane comes together. Check this out. <laughs> so there's my tool. Sometimes you gotta make them. Just leave that sitting in there. Pull this off. All right, got the cap out. Like I said, I just drilled a hole on each side of where that socket's supposed to go. And I made this little thing. I cut a piece of half inch rod I had to end up cutting it to make it this shape instead of just, you know, at a 90 degree. And as well, the two quarter inch pieces to where I could stab it through it and turn it. Uh, I was. So as you can see, I drilled, in, as I drilled into the plastic, I just went right into the filter as well. That way I can put it deep enough in there. But, got that out. All right, so I gotta put some new O-rings on these caps. Just roll them on on there, I'm assuming. All the way to right there. And I'd probably put a little bit of fresh oil on there, just so it doesn't uh, get pinched or anything while you're tightening it on. I'll go ahead and do that. cap here all right 
that's ready to go I'm gonna do the other one and I'll get back with you so as you can see these filters they come with these o-rings as well uh, this o-ring goes on to the aluminum cap the one that goes on the outside of here so you, you're gonna just not use this for the 4400 transaxles All right, so the oil is pretty much all dripped out of there. I'm gonna take the fresh filter and go ahead and stick it in. Make sure it's pushed in all the way. You don't wanna to push too hard, puncture it or anything, but you want this part on the outside, the black rubber grommet uh, goes on the inside so we can probably put the new cap back on here and I'm gonna be super careful not to strip it the threads or strip the, the socket section and this thing's all in the way right here so you gotta kind of maneuver around it don't cross thread it make sure you get it good Get a few turns by hand, which is going on pretty easy. That's good. Now, get me a paper towel, wipe all of this like that. That way I got a little room. And I'm using my 6.1 and 1 8 socket to tighten it back. with it. I'm not going to over tighten it. Make sure the socket doesn't slip. And I'm barely tightening it. I don't want it to over tighten it because it's plastic. I think I'm going to stop there. And I'll keep an eye on it once I'm done with the procedure and make sure no oil is leaking from it. Uh, it should be tight enough though. All right, so the next thing you want to do is after it's drained out and you're about to refill your reservoir here, you want to trace the hose that's going there. And right next to it, there's a 7 16 bolt. You want to pull it out. I got the ratchet on it right now. Uh, be careful not to break the plastic fans right here. And you want to take that out because when you fill the reservoir after it gets all five quarts in, you're going to have to wait right here and watch it. And once it starts spewing out, that means all the air has been pushed out and it's full. Then you want to be careful. Don't lose the bolt. Put it back on and tighten it up. All right, so there's the bolt that I pulled out, 716. It's got a little O-ring on it. Make sure you don't damage that and make sure it's, it looks like it's in good shape. And when you put it back on, it's gonna be real hard to get started because you don't have a whole lot of room to work up in there. So do the best you can with that. All right, make sure you have your nice clean funnel. Make sure no debris falls in there. You have it all nice clean area. And you're just gonna have to have patience filling this because uh, you're gonna fill the reservoir up and you're gonna wait for it to go down. Then you're gonna fill the reservoir up, wait for it to go down. Once you have pretty much the whole jug poured in there, then you wanna start watching above the wheel motor for it to come out of that weep hole or the, the bent hole, I should say. And once it starts coming out of there, you wanna be ready to put your little bolt back and tighten it up. Okay. Okay, we're getting full, so I'm gonna pause for the calls. Set that down here. 
and wait about five, 10 minutes, let it go down, come back. Normally, I would have both of them drained out and I would go back and forth. But for this particular job with my stripped caps and all of that, I'm gonna just do one side at a time and make sure I do it all right. I'm just gonna do the one side to show y'all how to do it and you just repeat the process on the other end. All right, we'll get back once this reservoir has gone down some. All right, so it's been about five minutes and the reservoir is completely drained again and we're gonna repeat that same process. Fill it all the way up again. Went overboard there. Mm, I'm gonna have some spillage. Yep, made a little bit of a mess. I'll clean that up right there. But that's how much all we got left. Did about two thirds of it so far. All right, let's go check this again. Looks like we're empty. Let's see if we can get the rest in there. All right, so I got me a little assistant here with some tiny hands. There she is. I'm gonna go ahead and top it off one last time. And I'm gonna watch for the oil to come out here. And she's just gonna reach from underneath and put the boat back in for me. A few moments later. All right, so we had a little bit of a dilemma. I'm so used to changing the oil on that mower there, which takes all five quarts. It's a much bigger wheel motor, the 5400. Apparently the 4400 on this mower only takes about four quarts. And if I would have read up on it or researched it, I would have known that. But as you can see, the reservoir is way too full. It's supposed to be way down here. And so it started overflowing down there. We had a mess. So what I'm doing is this syringe, using this syringe to put it back into the jug to where I can get it at the right level. Later. All right, y'all. So we have it to the cold full mark, which is about half inch from the bottom, maybe even three eighths of an inch on each. You want to make sure it's equal. Don't overfill these because when they get warm, you know they're gonna fill up. So the cold full mark is way down there, about a half inch from the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and close these up. Like I said earlier, we had the bolts, the 716th bolts pulled out. So whenever we filled these up, we made sure the oil came out of there, put the bolts back, and that's the level you want it at. Make sure you clean up all your mess. What I did is I sprayed some degreaser after everything was uh, bolted back, and uh, took uh, some compressed air and just blew it all off to get all the crud and grime off. And um, so it's nice and clean again. And the next step you're gonna do is come down here on this particular mower to release the hydros, you have to pull this lever back on each side. It's right above the filter. It's a little silver bracket. Just pull them back and that's gonna release the hydros 
And what you're going to want to do is start the mower up while the hydros are released. Get on the mower, take the brake off, and cycle through the controls and go back and forth about five or six times. And you're going to notice these aren't turning because the hydros are disengaged. And what that's going to do, if there's any air in the system, it's going to purge it out. And after you're done with that about five or six times, go ahead and re-engage this. You know, put it back to the position it was in. And then do the same thing again. And you'll notice these will start turning back and forth. And after that, you should be done. Put your wheels back on. Take it off jack stands. Try it out. Make sure you don't hear any kind of noises. Uh, make sure it feels right. Check your levels. And that's it.